Hello Rydon people, today we're going to install a Cardo Pactalk Bold intercom system. So this is the Cardo Pactalk line second helmet kit, it's going to go in my uh, second helmet. <laughs> and uh, so I've already got the, the key main device and uh, this is uh, 67 bucks from uh, Rebzilla, comes with the 40mm speakers, the boom mount. Uh, the boom mic and a sticky mic uh, depending on your preference and the clamp can be mounted with uh, the slide on the back or that can come off and you can put the sticky mount on and in essence it's the same as the full kit except you haven't got the actual main intercom device and it's got 40 millimeter speakers whereas I think uh, it comes with a JBL 45 millimeters uh, standard but it still works uh, very well I've used this before, so this is what we're going to install. So this is my new Climb Krios Pro crash helmet. And uh, you'll notice that I've already taken the visor, the face shield off. I've taken the peak off it. And I've already taken out the uh, internals. So you can see the uh, choroid tubes at the back there instead of a tr traditional EPA liner and has these uh, nice airflow tubes which hopefully I'm going to hide some of the cabling in. Now principles the same relevant to the helmet but just for uh, completeness for this particular helmet uh, here's the internal liner very simple to get out it has two poppers at the back that you just pull off so you just pull this away from the the back of the crash helmet those two poppers release and then this whole thing you can pull through the uh, face area and just uh, unclip these from the the headline in the uh, face area and then that whole liner comes out which is great for washing and then inside uh, you've got the cheek pads which are Purely velcroed in, you can see these velcro attachments here, no poppers, and uh, very easy. The hole is for the uh, chin strap, but essentially that just pops in there very easily. And then there is uh, this other one here for this side. And you'll notice uh, the one on this side has these recesses, and that's important. So we need to just uh, fit this back into the slot there to work out where this hole is because that's where we want our cables to run through when we put the intercom on the side of the crash helmet there. So we need to get that spot correct. Probably mark it off with a little bit of tape here initially so that we know where to put the sticky mount perfectly so that the cables from it go straight through there, straight into the helmet. I've just used a tiny amount of uh, duct tape there just to mark where I want the leads to go through. I found that the uh, if I want to use the actual clamp mount, there isn't much room here between the helmet and the liner to use the clamp. So I'm going to use the sticky mount purely on the outside. Now, you have to push down pretty hard in the hole there, preferably with a flat uh, head screwdriver, and pull this outwards and push it upwards so that this begins to slide out of its uh, housing, as you can see, until it comes out fully. And then you can just... Uh, pull the cables through and uh, get rid of that basically. So you're just left with this <clears throat> and the sticky mount just slides into that slot there, uh, other way around, slides into that slot there. So you're left with the sticky mount basically for attachment. So I did the boom mic, mic just to remove that, which is there. And uh, let's slide this male into this female and you can see what it looks like on. So with that slid in, you are good to go basically. It can be placed up on the, the helmet here and the cables can go where you've uh, marked out your optimum area for taking the cables through the helmet liner.
Okay, so I've tried to follow the lines of the helmet or this black line here with the cardo and the cables look pretty A1 perfect for where I've marked uh, them to go through the liner. Now, normally on helmets you have a, a recess for the ears and uh, but if you happen to have this uh, Klein Krios um, Pro, they don't actually do that. However, within the lining here, just above the strap, when you run your finger around there, there is a natural curve. And that's precisely in that curve where you want to be placing your speaker. So you can feel around like that with the edge of it to get it kind of perfect. And then you'll lay it down uh, when you want to secure it in place with the supplied Velcro. So as anyone who knows who's fitted one of these before, the bane of your life is the connector because that needs to be hidden in the lining somewhere. Otherwise it's gonna dig into your head somewhere and really annoy the crap out of you. Now they've improved the design. This used to be like an elbow joint connector for some bizarre reason. And that was always a pain, but now it's a inline connector, which is really good. And what I was hoping is within these air channels at the back of the uh, helmet where the toroid sits, I was hoping just to slot it in there and it's just too short when it runs from the headset down there. So I just can't do that. And normally you can hide it in the lining here or at the back when it's put back in. But unfortunately, uh, it's not that easy to do with the climb. So I had a bit of a genius idea. And apart from tying up the uh, helmet straps with a bit of a, bit of a, um, whatever they're called, cable tie. Um, I kind of noticed that this is a tube here and I thought uh, with a bit of genius, maybe I can run the lead up there and back down and hide the connector uh, physically inside it. And if I can, then that's great because then you're just dealing with the rest of the leads here to put in your helmet. And I can tell you when you're doing this job, a cat is absolutely of no use whatsoever. They give you no help. They just get in the way, they ruin your filming and uh, Cougar the Bengal, he doesn't give a crap. Okay, so I've got the female threaded in above this rivet to here and the male underneath this rivet to here, connected back in. Now I've just got to slide them back into the slot and uh, hopefully they won't uh, rub against my uh, my throat and annoy me, but uh, they feel pretty good when they're sat in the pouch here. So I pulled this cable through as far as it would go so that I don't have to uh, secure this and then I'll slot this back in this way in. I've just put a, a small amount of duct tape there on the connectors just to make sure that they hold together and I'll slide it down here which will free up more room for the actual uh, speaker cables itself. There we go, nice and neat and all hidden away. Okay, so the backs of these speakers are Velcro ready. And I've just put a sticker on here, just about to peel this off and put it in situ. So again, on this inner liner here, uh, there is a natural curve there that you need to fill with your finger. And then you need to recess the speaker into that curve towards the front of the helmet. There we go, all velcroed into place with a nice little natural curve to the uh, OEM lead here, which I'll secure after I put in place the other the uh, other speaker. Okay, so the uh, right hand speaker is now in two. I've just got to tidy up the cable that's uh, between them and then deal with the, uh, the mic. So with a few strategically placed bits of Velcro, I now have the cables all nicely secured and out of place and behind the liners. And they shouldn't bother me and they shouldn't be moving around. So good to go. Now I just need to deal with the mic. So the uh, sticky Velcro is on. And uh, one thing you have to be aware of is this little arrow here must be pointing towards the mouth. So it's important that is uh, that way round. So I don't know if I'll be able to, but uh, equally cool, when I connect the uh, the mic up here, if I can slid it up there into that uh, chin strap underneath, 
that would be particularly cool as well. So uh, I did manage to get the mic connector up into the little strap. It feels pretty good behind it. So all we've got to do is just Velcro these neatly together and jobs are good. And so a very, very neat installation. I'm very happy. Cabling is all tucked out of the way. It's not going to annoy me. Uh, it's not going to be moving anywhere, particularly the, uh, the speakers. They're all nice and snug. And a uh, bit of a result with this uh, this sheaf of a uh, chin strap to hide the connectors behind both for the speakers and also for the mic. And the mic is gone in nicely as well. If I can angle the camera enough. So I have it nice and uh, snug in the uh, the mouthpiece there. Little connector up there. Another secure in there. And then couldn't be neater with the cabling out to here. Just remove my little bit of sticky uh, duct tape there. It'll be good to put the liner back in and she is good to go. Hope you enjoyed this quick install of the PacTalk Bold Intercom Spare Helmet Set. And uh, if you've got a Klein Krios Pro, it'll probably be of particular interest, but the same principles apply for any helmet, really. It's a pretty easy DIY job. Have a go yourself, and uh, you'll always be able to communicate no matter what helmet you've got in your head. Hey, you. If you want to become one of the right on people, don't forget to subscribe. Write often, write carefully, write on.